Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I own the Water Filter eStore and the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Today we're talking about how to do the yearly maintenance on a UV Dynamics mini rack system. So this is the system here. Water flows in from the left out through the right. Once a year, the ultraviolet light needs to be replaced and uh, the filters need to be replaced at least once a year. Um, the sediment filter might, be ha might need to be replaced a little bit more often depending on uh, how much sediment you have in your water, how much water you use, things like that. So the first stage is we want to close the, shut off the ball valve of the water entering into the system so that uh, we can shut off the, the water flow. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to unplug the ultraviolet, uh, the, the ballast so that we have no power going to the ultraviolet bulb and that will allow the bulb to cool off a little bit. They, are, they do get quite warm uh, when, they're, when they're turned on so we can let that. So what we would do after we've shut that off, open up a faucet somewhere in the house, let the water run until it flows to a trickle and that's going to release the pressure through here and then you're going to close that faucet. Then what you can do is close the ball valve that's after the ultraviolet light and that keeps all the water from the house draining back and draining out of here. So now what we want to do is we're going to get a bucket ready and put it underneath, um, put it underneath. We're going to open up these two uh, filter canisters, drain all the water out, remove the old filters, clean out the inside of these uh, filter canisters, put brand new filters in, put them back in, tighten them up. Usually hand tight is enough. But uh, if, if you find that once you've finished everything and you've, and you've turned the water back on, you have a bit of a leak, then um, you can uh, depressurize the whole system again and just tighten it up a little bit with this wrench and that'll be fine. Okay, so now to actually re replace the ultraviolet uh, light bulb. Um, I always recommend that you obviously have a new ultraviolet light bulb available to replace, but that you always have a spare glass sleeve, a quartz sleeve I should say, because if that quartz sleeve, if you drop it or it gets damaged, in a lot of cases you may not be able to get the water back on in your house until that quartz sleeve has been replaced. So it's a good idea to have a spare one on hand. Also, you never know when you might need one, because if the quartz sleeve is uh, quite dirty and you can't get it clean, then you need to replace it right away, and you probably won't know that until you open it up. All right. So there's a little nut on the side of the uh, electrical connection here. You unscrew that and then the, the top of the electrical connection and the bulb um, come loose. Now you need to grab that uh, bulb. I always recommend you, you handle it with a cloth. You can touch the ceramic ends with your fingers, but it's always better to grab a cloth. So then you just pull the electrical connection straight off, pull the bulb straight out. Set that bulb aside, make sure you don't mix it up with the new bulb. And uh, then you undo the, um, the gland nut. And, whoops, that was the old bulb. Um, and then we pull the quartz sleeve and the gland nut straight out. Don't angle it from side to side because it would, would break it. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure you clean that quartz sleeve. Um, you can use CLR, lime away, vinegar, anything like that, but it has to become perfectly clean. If you can't get it perfectly clean, you'll have to replace that quartz sleeve because the, the new ultraviolet light wouldn't have the intensity to, to, to go through that um, buildup on the outside of the quartz sleeve and kill your um, bacteria. So that's why it needs to be nice and clean. All right, so once you've cleaned that, then you would slide that back in. Make sure you check the o-ring at the top too, by the way, I didn't mention that, but uh, make sure that's in good shape and uh, um, make sure it's wet, but I mean it would be wet now anyway because you've uh, taken it out. So, okay, so then now what we're going to do is we're going to tighten up that, um, that gland nut with the quartz sleeve on it. And again, you only have to do it hand tight. Any more than that, good chance of breaking that uh, quartz sleeve. Okay, so now we grab the new bulb. And again, handling it only with the cloth or only the ceramic ends with your fingers. Slide that down. Take the electrical connection and make sure you line up the pins. Slide it all the way down. This ground would actually be on would actually be um, tightened onto the end of the UV bulb. And then we slide that all the way down. 
There's a little knurled um, nut on the side here that you tighten. Again, you just have to tighten it just enough to hold that uh, bulb down. It's plastic, so you have to be careful you don't over tighten it because you can actually strip the threads. Okay, so once you've got that in there, then the next stage is to plug in the ultraviolet light. Now, if this needed to be replaced, it's, a year's been up, you need to reset the timer. To do that, there's a button on the side. Where's the button? Oh, the, sorry, the button on these ones is on the front. So to do these ones, you, you, you press in the button and you hold it down while you're plugging it in. Then after it's plugged in, continue to hold down the button and then it'll, it'll give you a long beep for about um, three or four seconds and then three short beeps. And then you can let it go and then it's been reset. Okay, so then it won't beep again for after 11 months, it'll start to warn you when it's time to replace it on the 12th month. Okay, so once we've got that plugged in, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the inlet just slightly, just enough so you can hear the water flowing. So now it's going to slowly fill this up. It's going to fill up the uh, ultraviolet chamber. So now you can check for leaks. Assuming there's no leaks, then what you can do is you can open this up all the way. Once you've done that, then you can open up the, the, the ball valve at the outlet. You can open that again. Again, open it slightly. You don't want to open it full force because then the, the water hammer that goes through can cause problems for you. So once you've got that open and it's all, um, there's no leaks, everything looks good, you can open up that ball valve all the way, then go to go anywhere in the house, somewhere nearby, usually a laundry tub or something like that, open up the faucet, let the water run, you'll get some sputtering and some spitting, that's normal once you get the air out of it, then uh, you're good to go. If you like what you saw today, please please click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified about all the new videos as they become available in this series. And you can check out the other videos on our uh, YouTube channel. Um, some more information, you can uh, go to our website at uh, thewaterfilterestore.com or thewaterstoremidland.com. Again, I'm Gary the Water Guy from the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Thanks for watching.